Hey guys, what's going on? It's Nock. Welcome back to episode number six of my Minecraft Let's Play. Today we're starting out over at the village because something weird's gone on and I'm not quite sure why. Yeah, as you can see, we had a hole in the wall here and I came over here and I panicked straight away given that we'd spent quite a lot of time in previous episodes trying to get the Mending and Fortune Villager. However, I'm happy to report that after checking my village, the villagers are all still in place. That was a big weight off my mind for sure. So I thought I'd start off today's episode, we'd just be over here and we'd just patch all of this up. I think what's probably happened is that there was a creeper over here and he's probably had a confrontation with an iron golem and yeah it's ended up blowing a hole in my roof i really need to do something a little bit better in this area clearly because this isn't the best sort of security for my village i might extend the trench a little bit more as you can see all my villagers are still here in my village everybody is happy i'm happy and that is all that really matters so having patched everything up and done a little bit of trading with our villagers let's take a look at what's been going on in between episodes Ladies and gentlemen, do not adjust your screens. Really, that is what has been going on between episodes. I haven't really been playing a lot of Minecraft over the last week or so. I've actually been busy doing some less things. So yeah, there's no real progress to show you other than this. And I redesigned my bee farm to look like this. There was an issue whereby things weren't really optimal in that I was getting empty bottles coming through the system. But now I have set up the two beehives next to each other. One is doing honey bottles, one is doing honeycomb and they are working just perfectly. And here is the redstone mechanism that is doing just that. Yeah, this took me a little bit of time to actually get working. It took four iterations, but let me jump over to my testing world and I will basically do a quick overview of how everything works. So here we are in my testing world and these are the four designs that I came up with for an efficient bee farm or trying to get the efficient bee farm. So this is number one. So number one was just simply based on the fact that I'd read that beehives and bee nests give out a maximum signal strength of five. So therefore I put a comparator at the back and I put a line of five redstone dust. Once it hits five, it will trigger this repeater. This is just something I put here. And then it fires the dispenser, which has bottles in it. And because the dispenser is full, the bottle can't go back into the dispenser. And that is the key thing here. If there is a space in the dispenser, there's a chance that the honey bottle will go back into the dispenser. So making sure that every space in the dispenser is full is actually key to the operation. But anyway, the dispenser dispenses a glass bottle and we end up with a bottle of honey. I only recently discovered the dispenser needs to be full issue. And this was something I was doing in between to try and combat that. So I kind of put hoppers all the way around here and hoped that all of these hoppers here would pick up the ejected honey bottle. Problem is, a lot of the time, the honey bottle would actually land on top of this comparator. So there was no way for me to actually pick it up because for some reason it wouldn't go through the comparator. Design number three, I don't even know what I was trying to do here. I had redstone out the back, redstone out the front. This was comparing if it had something in there of a locked hopper and it was doing things here. And uh, do you know what? Let's just not even look at that. But this is our final one. This is our final design that we came and settled upon and it works pretty well. So again, we've got the, the five redstone dust line here, which will trigger the repeaters. And then it triggers the line back to the droppers here, which will drop either the shears or the bottles. And then our honeycomb and honey bottles will go below. So there we go. That's uh, an overview of my farm. I took a bit of inspiration from this from one of the YouTube videos listed on the Minecraft Wiki website. So it's not entirely my own design, but the redstone lines and everything and these circuits over here were all mine. I just need a little bit of help to tidy bits and pieces up here, but so far so good. Everything is efficient, but like I said, it all depends and it all rests on keeping this dispenser stocked full with bottles and not having an empty space here. With regards to the surrounding of this place, this is just something I knocked together. I don't know if I'm 100% happy with the way it looks right now but at least we can see into like the actual bee chamber and we can see the bees flying around then we kind of like have that kind of like 
barn kind of looking thing. I don't know. I think maybe do something different with the roof. I'm not really sure. But in time, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and run those hoppers back into my main storage system somewhere under here. And what I would like to do is automate it so that when I take the honey out of the bottle and craft the honey block, I can put the bottle back in the chest and then that will feed back into here. It's going to take a bit of work, I think, but at the minute, I'm not too bothered about doing that because I already have plans for this episode. So as the night time draws in, let's discuss what we're going to be doing in this episode. So as I mentioned in the previous episode today, we are going to be concentrating and working on our slime farm. We found our slime chunk in the previous episode, so today is going to be all about digging out the levels, getting the iron golems in place, and then hopefully getting a nice quantity of slime balls from our slime farm. One thing I will say though is unfortunately I didn't clear down all of the fence posts that I said I was going to do in between episodes, so I'm going to head down there clear out some fence posts and I'll see you once all that's been cleared. All right, guys, we are back down in the slime chunk area. This is our slime chunk that we found in previous episodes. And now we're gonna start actually working on the slime farm. Now I'll be deviating slightly from Shulker Crafts video just for the simple reason that I don't really have enough resources to make all of the iron golems that he recommends in his video. So what I'm gonna do is use a bit of a hybrid method using Shulker Crafts farm combined with an idea I saw on an Exumavoid video whereby we have an eye golem on the floor. Now, I'm going to have my platforms going up on level by level, and I'll have iron golems in the wall, much like Shulkercraft's explanation does. The only difference is I'm going to have my main magma block and iron golem in a central position here. The iron golem will be surrounded by lava, so the slimes will spawn on the platforms, go towards the golems either side, drop down to the bottom, but then they will target the iron golem on this side over here. That means they'll all go onto the magma, die on the magma, and then all their slime balls and everything will drop down below and into a chest and hopper system that I will set up underneath the magma. Now, like I said, this is a hybrid idea that I thought of just because I don't have enough resources to create all of the iron golems needed at the moment in time. In fact, I've only got enough to make three at the moment which is pretty poor. Maybe in the next episode, we'll start looking at making an iron farm. So I don't even know this is gonna work, but I'm just gonna play around and see what I can come up with. So without further ado, let's uh, let's make a start. Okay, so first things first, we need to find the central points. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this is a central plot, as is this. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this is our dead center area here. So this is where our iron golem will be standing. We're then going to dig around here. And we're going to create a two wide area. What we'll do with this area here is we will fill it with magma. So underneath here is where our actual um, item system will be running. Now, my only question is I'm at level six. So the chances are I'm going to dig down here and come to bedrock. That's what I thought. So we're going to need to actually raise this area up. So if I put a another block and a slab there, which means our magma will then go here. No, we want the magma to go. Actually, hold on. I can't remember. Yeah, okay. So, again, I've not actually done this. This is just me trying to be a bit creative and um, come up with a, a hybrid solution of my own based on some ideas I've seen from other people. Okay, all our magma is now in place. So now we can. I'm just going to dig down a little bit more here. Uh, yep, so the iron golem will be stood here. Then we need our rails to run on here. If I just get my rails out like this. I wanted to create a perimeter here just so I can see where my lines are running. And then we can take all of this area out here so that we can actually move around underneath our area and collect our drops as we go. 
Okay, so my foundations are down, my minecart is on, and it is working its way around quite nicely. Excellent stuff. So we're actually done with the magma block now. Let's set up a little collection system here then. We're going to want to bring this up to the surface at some point. It doesn't matter necessarily at the moment where we put this. So let us take away the block over here. We haven't got a powered rail here. So let's do it over here. And then we will put our chests in here. One chest for now. I'll put on top. Like so. So the first part is done. We have got our collection system working here. Next up, we need to go upwards. We need to start working our way up and mining out all of this area above. I think for a start, what I will do is I'm just going to concentrate on getting that first iron golem in the middle here. And then I'm going to slab out a level here. And I think once we've got that, we can maybe look to address the other stuff um, a little later but definitely we need to get one in the middle just so we've actually got some sort of working farm and collection system so i'm going to concentrate on that and uh, i'll uh, be back real soon to show you what progress we have made and our last few slabs are going in now we just need to take out a few of these blocks here and then I also need to take out these fence posts here because they're going to stop our slimy friends from dropping down if we get any on that platform. But that is that is our platform created. Ignore all the junk in there. Uh, everything's just gone a bit crazy. But let's take a quick look then up the top here and we can think then about... Getting our iron golem ready to rock and roll. But yes, we have our first platform here. Uh, still need to take some bits and pieces out, as you can see. But at the moment, everything is looking pretty good. Actually, I've made a mistake. I want this platform to extend all the way to the walls, don't I? Ha. Let me create that and I'll be right back. Okay, so we have corrected our mistake and we now have this platform here. We're going to have to put maybe some fence posts around the outside here or just fill this in with blocks. It's very dark, but we shouldn't get any mobs spawning up here because mobs can't spawn on slabs if my Minecraft knowledge is correct. Anyway, let's now concentrate on the iron golem, which is going to be over here. So we're going to just put a fence post around this area here like so. Before I close it off though, we're going to get our iron golem ready. We'll do him in a T-pose like this. We will finish blocking this off there and then hopefully everything is going to go right. That's not right, Knock. Okay, take two. Ah. What did I do wrong? Okay, I have a hunch that I haven't given the iron golem enough space around here to, to initially spawn. So, just going to do take number two here. Take away the fence posts as well. There we go. We have our iron golem. He is all in there. And yeah, we... um. Clearly, we didn't give him enough space. But with that now in place, our initial collection system is pretty much ready to go. We just need to now spend some time uh, doing a bit of AFKing away from this. Also, got to be careful with that when we get to that because there is lava directly above there. So it will make it interesting a little bit later. But yeah, we need to go away a little bit for lack of a better term, and then we need to just see what happens with this iron golem and whether or not we can actually spawn any slimes here. So I'm just going to put a fence around this area here, and I'll finish that off over there once I have um, left this area because I need to get out of here first. I'll probably just also collect up these resources, but I'm just going to put a fence here just so 
any little slimes that spawn cannot drop down uh, into this area here. But this area here should only spawn slimes because we are standing on slabs as opposed to full blocks. And uh, regular mobs can't spawn on slabs, only slimes can. So I'm just going to finish this off. I'm going to take out all of those precious goodies that we have waiting for us um, above us. And then we'll find a nice spot to AFK. I'll switch to the camera account and we'll just watch for a little bit just to see if we get anything uh, anything biting, for lack of a better term. So, uh, yeah, let's switch over to the camera account and see if our slime farm is going to work. A real quick time lapse here just to show that my mob farm is slightly working, but we have issues. We have wastage, as you can see. There's areas where the slime can die if the iron golem kills it and the collection system isn't picking up the slime box. Also, we've got mob spawning. And I said earlier on that they couldn't spawn on slabs. Well, it turns out the slabs have to be on the bottom half of the block. If you put slabs on the top half, they can still spawn on top of them. But I think that can easily be resolved. We can actually get rid of the slabs and just use torches because slimes can spawn in torch areas. I've been doing a lot of reading and research on this topic. But as you can see, it is working. We are getting some slimes at least. I just need to do a bit of a redesign. But also, we almost lost our iron golem. Good job I was watching my camera account because this skeleton came in and started wrecking him. But uh, I just rushed in just in time to save the day, kill the skelly, and our golem has survived. And our troubles don't just end there. You may have noticed that when we were building the initial platforms for the slime farm, we came across this, which was some lava dripping right above us. Now, I went and checked this out off camera, and if we go through the walls here, it leads into a cave system. Our slime chunk is directly above our cave system. Now, the good news for this is the lava that is above us isn't a pool of lava. It's just a single block, so that will be easy enough to take care of. What I'm not so happy about is the fact that we're in this cave and it's dark. And that means we're going to have to build up a perimeter around this chunk as we go up, which is going to take a considerable amount of work. But if we want this project to succeed, then we're going to have to do it going forward. So with that in mind, it's time to get into serious building mode. We're going to head on into that cave. We're going to dig out our 16 by 16 area, take our slime chunk up to level 40, making everything nice and safe as we go along. <sighs> it's going to be a lot of work, but let's get to it. Alright guys, a quick progress update from me. As you've probably seen in the timelapse, I've been busy carving out the area. I've actually gone up to level 42 here, just to give myself a little bit of extra height at the top. But yeah, we're slowly making our way down, slowly, slowly. You can see that is actually, that level down there is our I am Golem level. So about five, six, seven, eight, nine levels on this side 
off where we need to be. And I've just been concentrating on this side for a start. You can see I've walled off the areas here and um, started to enclose everything here. But yeah, slowly, slowly, this is all coming together. Um, I probably won't time lapse much more of digging out because it's pretty tedious just to watch somebody hollow out an entire area. So yeah, I will get back to doing some more digging and hopefully it won't be too much longer before I am down at our iron golem level. So ah, here goes. Here we are just finishing off mining the final three layers. I think in total this project took me about an hour and a half to two hours. So not as long as I thought it was going to take me. But it's not quite finished just yet. So now that we've done all of this mining and they've got this casing for our slime farm, we now need to build in the individual levels and platforms so that the slimes can actually spawn and make their way to the bottom. All right, guys, I have been busy adding in platforms and doing a bit of AFKing down this little tunnel. And let me show you what I have got in regards to my I am Gollum farm. So originally I had an idea and I'll be honest, it was, as I said, a hybrid idea that I was sort of going to work on on the fly. And it's a lot different than I originally anticipated it to be. But the proof is in the pudding and it is at least working. We've got almost two stacks of slime in the time we have been stood down that tunnel. So let me show you exactly what I have got here. So this is an unfinished layer at the minute. As you see, we've got quite a way to go to make this a little bit more efficient. Hopefully the more layers I add in, the more slime can spawn here. But you kind of get the idea. So I've created these four wide ledges with three blocks of height between each of them all the way up. You can see my markers there where I've still got to come and do a bit more. But in the middle here is where I'm actually standing iron golems. You'll remember originally I said I was going to put iron golems in the wall. Now, the problem with that is because I am limited to the amount of iron I've currently got, it would have meant that I would have only been able to add one layer. At the minute, I've managed to make it a four layer farm because slime are still spawning on here and pathfinding down this block here. They can still see this iron golem right here when they're on these uh, blocks. Even if they spawn here, they can still see the iron golem down below. So what is happening is the slime will come towards the middle, towards these iron golems in the middle. They can't go anywhere because I've trapped them in with fence posts and then they will drop down. They will drop down all the way to the floor. Sometimes when the big slimes come along, they get a little bit stuck. There is enough room for them to get down. I did test that out. But the iron golems are here to give them a little smack and that will make them fall all the way down to the bottom where they'll effectively end up dying because of A, the iron golems and B, the magma on the floor. So yeah, this is what we've got so far. I'm really relatively happy with it. Um, I think in turn, I would like to put the iron golems in the wall and make these platforms a little bit bigger. And what we would do there is we'd have the full 16 by 16 platform available for the slimes to spawn. The iron golems would be set back from the wall slightly and we'd have trenches at the edges here where they could drop down. So I did some reading about slime spawning and from where a slime spawns, it can actually target a player or an iron golem from 16 blocks away. But the problem is it's 16 blocks in a in a circular fashion. So let's imagine we had our iron golem on that side here and our slime spawned here. It can see that corner there and that corner there, but then it arcs across in the circle. So the slime from here wouldn't actually be able to see that iron golem there. So you do need to have two iron golems, one on each side. But like I said, because of my poor uh, count of iron right now I decided not to do that and instead put them in the middle where wherever a slime spawns on this platform they will always be able to see the iron golems in the middle. Something that I didn't show before was that I'd extended out the minecart rail track here in an attempt to catch the slime blocks that were falling outside of the magma which seems to happen quite regularly. I've been watching on my camera account at some of the slime spawning and uh, actually being destroyed turning into slime balls and it does happen quite often but this system seems to catch them none of the blocks so far have fallen outside of this radius and as you see i've actually made this a little better than the system we had before but yeah no i haven't been afk in all that long and two stacks of slime blocks for an incomplete farm to be fair is um 
relatively good going, I think. So we're back up at the base and I thought it would be a good time to make our first lot of slime blocks. Oh yeah. Just, just, just look at them. Oh yes. So now we can start to look at doing some really interesting things that involve <laughs> sticky pistons now that we're going to have a, uh, a supply of slime blocks. We're going to AFK downstairs for quite some time later on, I think, to get some more stocked up. And in between episodes, I will also be looking to get the rest of those platforms in and get some iron golems finished off, providing I can actually find some more iron thank you very much for watching this one we didn't get a massive amount of projects done today but i did manage to actually focus buckle down and get the one big project done that i wanted to so in the next episode if i can do some research in between this and that one i will potentially be looking to create an iron farm because iron resources are definitely something we are struggling with at the moment also, as another little pointer as well, when I was trading with villagers at the beginning of this episode, I've actually unlocked the enderpearl trade with the cleric. So I am planning on episode 10 that we are going to go and fight the ender dragon, do a bit of an end episode, finding the stronghold and doing that battle. So that will be episode 10, but we're still quite a way off getting to there. But thank you very much for watching, guys. I appreciate your support as always. And until the next one, goodbye.